Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be ranking all 30 conjuration spells in Skyrim from worst to best. We are going to look at every conjuration spell in the base game and the DLCs, but we're not going to cover anything in the creation club. In this video, we are not going to cover Spectral Arrow because it's not obtainable for the player. And we are also not going to cover Summon um, Unbound Dramora because it's only used once in a quest. There's not much we can really talk about it there. I ranked all 30 of these spells based on a combination of combat effectiveness and utility. That is what is the most important to me in this school of magic, so that's what I ranked them all. I'm also going to rank these spells based on how useful they are for all parts of the game. For example, in a, if an apprentice level spell remains useful for a large part of the game, it will rank higher on this list. I would also like to remind you that we all play this game differently, so my list may not be the same as your list. That is okay. Please respectively comment down below if you think a certain spell should be higher or lower on the list. I can't wait to read your responses. With all of that out of the way, let's dive straight into the video. Conjure Familiar is a really bad spell. The HP on the summon is downright awful and the damage output is pathetic. Even at lower levels, this spell simply costs way too much magicka to use for the payout. Use Ray Zombie instead if you want a good novice level spell, but skip out on Conjure Familiar. Soul Trap is a really good enchantment, but it's a terrible spell for one main reason. There's a perk in the Conjuration Tree called Soul Stealer at level 30 Conjuration. This perk makes it so that bound weapons cast Soul Trap automatically. After the Dragonborn gets this perk, which is pretty early in the game, there's almost no use for Soul Trap as a spell anymore. So I've decided to group all these spells here together because they really do the same thing, just in a slightly different fashion. Be honest, on a typical day of playing Skyrim, how often do you see an Elementor Atronach or a Daedra enemy? Probably not very often. If you do see one, they're, they're really often easy to deal with, especially if you have a follower to distract them while you kill the mage. If the mage is dead, then the summon goes away. Command Daedra isn't much better either, mostly because you will already likely have other summons by your side and they are probably stronger. These spells also cost a lot of magicka. The only problem with these guys is that they are pretty fragile. They still have a pretty strong range attack, which means they can be used in narrow passage wage like these in the next clip. As you can see, they are absolutely bullying this Draugr, and he really doesn't seem to want to do anything about it. Placing this spell here is just a personal decision, because I do not use two-handed weapons in any of my mage playthroughs. With this weapon, you also lose the benefit of being able to carry another spell or item in your offhand, which is a huge disadvantage. I think this spell is usable in some cases, but there are definitely way better options available, considering that disadvantage you get when using this spell. To me, this spell is really just a gimmick. This spell is basically just a heat-seeking fireball. The magicka cost is definitely one of the biggest upsides of this spell, being that it only has a base magicka cost of 52, but the damage output is pretty bad to mid to high level gameplay. The damage is comparable to this fireball spell, which against higher level enemies doesn't really do a whole lot. The only difference between the Thrall spells and the regular spells is that the Thralls have an infinite duration. This isn't much of an upside, however, when you think about it, because most fights either result in the Atronach dying, or the fight will end before the regular spells would expire anyways. Not to mention the extremely high amount of magicka required to summon these elemental Thralls, or the long casting time. Still, the actual summons themselves are good enough to land them here, but they have way too many downsides for a pretty lame upside.
I know that some of you are going to argue this one, but this is where I'm placing the spell. Arbeck is great for when you need to get from place to place in a short amount of time. This spell is pretty useful for no fast travel playthroughs as well. Other than that, Arvac is a good spell, but there isn't anything that he can do that other horses can't, considering that regular horses spawn with you every time you fast travel. Mistman is a decent summon. The only problem is that once he runs out of Magicka, which happens quickly, he will resort to a weak melee attack. His spells are also really basic, casting either Frostbite or Ice Spike. These spells surprisingly did more damage than I expected, but he is really ineffective against anything frost resistant. If you've encountered these guys in Solstein before, you would know how annoying these guys are to fight against. Unfortunately, it's a mediocre spell at best. The worst downside is that it's unaffected by the Twin Souls perk, meaning that it is a less viable option in the endgame. His attacks do a good amount of damage though, which gives him this spot on the list. The Ash Garden is a really good summon if you have a Hearthstone. For those unaware, if you cast a spell without a Hearthstone in your inventory, then the Ash Guardian becomes hostile to the Dragonborn as well as the enemies. Now, Hearthstones are not particularly rare, but it is pretty annoying to have to take a trip to Solstheim in order to use this spell safely. The Seeker is a strong summon, however he is incredibly slow, which makes it hard to aggro enemies onto him. He is effective against single targets, but he often gets swarmed by multiple enemies. The Seeker does have a high HP, which lands him in the middle of this list. In my opinion, daggers get advantage in traditional combat in this game because their fast attack speed allows the Dragonborn to quickly stack enchantment effects onto the enemy. Since you can't enchant bound weapons, this advantage is lost. However, the spell is still extremely effective if you are making a stealth magic assassin build. The spell still allows you to use your offhand though, which is definitely a benefit in my opinion. So, I've decided to put all the raised dead spells near the top 10 because they're all pretty good. They basically do the same thing, but they're just more powerful at different levels. Some are more useful at their respective levels than others, but overall, they're all powerful spells. So I think that this is a fair placement to represent all of them. The Frost Atronach is an absolute powerhouse, featuring a high health pool and a powerful AoE attack. The Frost Atronach is a great choice for most encounters. The only issue is that he has a tough time traversing the indoors. Houses, some caves, fortresses, and dungeons are only a few examples where I would say that he can be more of a nuisance than anything. Other than that downside, the Frost Atronach is a great summon. Some of you would put this way higher up on the list, but it doesn't really fit my playstyle at all. I can acknowledge, however, that it is definitely one of the best options for players to use in the early to mid game. This thing does a lot of damage. It's also commonly used in speedruns and legendary difficulty playthroughs. Like I said, I tend not to use it that much, but that doesn't mean that it isn't the best range option for a large portion of the game. It even gives you free arrows. Flame Atronach is this high on the list because it is simply the best apprentice spell by a long shot. You are going to be using this spell a lot in the early to mid game. Even in higher levels, I still feel like this spell is really effective because of its versatility. The Flame Atronach shoots fireballs at a distance and utilizes a strong melee attack for those who do make the distance. She is also fast and can move away from enemies as they are distracted. Don't underestimate the power of the Flame Atronach. According to the unofficial wiki page, the Wrathman has the highest health pool out of all the summons. I know that the gameplay counters my point, 
but these are very high level force one that they are fighting, and they do a lot of damage. These skeletons wield two-handed dragon bone weapons, which pack a punch. There isn't much that else that makes them more special than that, which leaves them at the number 6 spot, but they are still a very good choice of summon. The Storm Atronach is really good. He has a high HP, shoots powerful chain lightning spells, and has a great melee attack. The only downside is that the Storm Atronach isn't as aggressive as I would like them to be, leading them to not really take advantage of their high health pool. Still, this spell deserves a spot in the top 5. The Dramora Lord has full Daedric armor, wields a powerful sword with a great fire enchantment on it, and has high HP. He is a little slow, but he makes up for it in damage. He often goes for power attacks, which deal a lot of damage. Overall, he is one of the highest damage dealing tanks in the game, from my observations at least. Bound Sword is my favorite bound weapon for a few reasons. First of all, it is a great way for the Dragonborn to help out their summons while they distract enemies. It is a great way to level up one-handed while also doing a mage build too. It also allows you to use a spell or item in your offhand. Healing, a ward, a torch, a shield, or others. Imagine the possibilities. Overall, Bound Sword allows the Dragonborn to get more involved in fights. It allows you to deal a lot of damage while enemies are distracted. There's practically no downside to using this weapon too. This spell summons a powerful mage who's invulnerable to most attacks. He shoots powerful spells too. The unofficial wiki says that he also can heal you with healing hands, but that hasn't happened to me personally. The only downside is that the spell does not work with a Twin Souls perk but it's very difficult to argue with invulnerability. As a sweet bonus, this spell costs zero magicka, which, which means that with this spell, the Dragonborn will always have a backup option, no matter what their magicka situation is. In my opinion, this is by far the best conjuration spell in the entire game. With this spell, you can have basically any human or creature by your side for the rest of the game. They don't even disintegrate when they die. You can also equip any weapons and gear on them by putting it on their body before you resurrect them. Imagine Ulfric Stormcloak or General Tullius with full Daedric armor following you around. Get the Twin Souls perk and you can have two entities following around you decked in the best gear in the game. Very overpowered spell when you can consider the endless amount of possibilities that the player has when using this spell. Well, that is the end of my list. I want to thank you guys all for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a like or subscribe. Please respectively comment down below if you think any changes should be made to this list. Also, comment if you want me to rank anything else in Skyrim, and I'd ha be happy to do it. Um, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.